$100 bond me right here. It's so egregious, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Once in a generation, a chosen group of Mavericks commit themselves to making food history, pushing past boundaries and culinary common sense to create something truly legendary. Today, we are those Mavericks. It's my mission to travel throughout Vietnam, demystifying its diverse cuisine. Some of it has been unusual, and all of it has tasted amazing. But today, we're going to explore the magic that is the banh mi. The liver pate and mayonnaise, that's a great combination. We'll check out a local restaurant that's introduced a modern twist to some classic Vietnamese staples. One of my favorite things here, they have the banh seo taco. And finally, we'll meet the masterpiece itself, created by Michelin-trained chef Peter Franklin. When I had this amazing, uh, Lee's stupid idea to make a hundred dollar bond me. <laughs> I came to you and I want to know what you were first thinking when I told you this. Aside from pho, the Vietnamese sandwich known as banh mi is probably the most internationally recognized food to come out of this country. You can't walk 10 steps down a busy Saigon street without running into a cart serving this tasty treat. Each vendor has their own unique take on the classic, but today we'll explore the four most popular types of southern style banh mi, starting with a little banh mi cart where I eat breakfast nearly every morning. Here we are at my favorite breakfast spot in Saigon. I get a couple banh mi's with egg. And I didn't even know this was a thing when I first came to Vietnam, because as a kid, I would always make egg sandwiches, and that's essentially what she has here. She has a couple different kinds of banh mi, but we're gonna look at the egg banh mi, banh mi chung. After getting sliced open, my egg banh mi will get a dousing of soy sauce, a couple cucumbers, pickled vegetable, a healthy mound of cilantro, a few sliced chili peppers, and of course, two piping hot fried eggs topped with one last splash of soy sauce and some salt and pepper. So right now, we have our beautiful egg banh mi, and look at this packaging. Look, it's in a nice plastic bag. They put somebody's schedule from last week on here so that it collects all the extra oils and stuff like that. We have a toothpick. I did ask her to just make it the normal way. She put in cucumber. I get why people would like the cucumber. It would add that bit of freshness and a little bit of texture. I get it, I just hate cucumber. Mmm. There's something so right about having eggs in the morning. A lot of people have eggs and toast. Why not combine them? The soy sauce is what's giving it a ton of flavor and adding all the salt. This happens to be one of my favorites just because this place is literally 100 meters from my house. I come here every morning, nearly, and I grab a couple banh mi's and a coffee, and I'm good to go for the rest of the day, <clears throat> until, you know, 10 a.m. Here we are, banh mi heo wei, one of the most popular banh mi's. It is filled with roasted pork. They've got the roasted pork hanging up in the window, quite beautiful and here they've cut it down to size. They've chipped it up into little pieces. Well, let's go inside and see what's, what the deal is, yo. Oh, it's a busy day at the banh mi shop. Hi, lady. This roasted pork banh mi is filled with pickled carrot and radish, roasted pork, cucumber, except not in my case, scallions, cilantro, sliced hot chili peppers, and a special sweet sauce that includes garlic, onion, fish sauce, soy sauce, and pork fat. Uh, how many? 20. It's 20,000 dong, so about $1. That is an incredible value. So right here, we can see the majesty and the mystique of the banh mi heo wei. Mm. This banh mi has a totally different personality. Right away, the sauce takes over. The sauce is a bit sweet. The cuts of pork are very fatty, which I enjoy, because I'm a, fa a fatty. There's some heavy meat, but of course, they're always gonna add some balance in Vietnam. They lighten up with a little bit of the cilantro. And having cilantro in a sandwich adds a really unique taste. It's something I'd never experienced until coming to Vietnam. I'd only had cilantro with Mexican food before, but, but try putting it in a sandwich sometime. It's real nice. The bread inside, it's super soft. 
and it's a little bit more crispy uh, shell on the outside. In Vietnamese, banh mi literally means bread, and this French-influenced single-serving baguette is ubiquitous in Vietnam. The unique blend of wheat flour and rice flour bake up into the perfect sandwich vehicle, crispy on the outside and light and airy on the inside. Bakeries generally start their banh mi prep late at night, allowing the dough a few hours to rise. Then by 3 a.m., they're tossed into an oven, and the final product is placed into a basket and covered with a burlap sack, ensuring they stay fresh and warm until they hit your taste buds. Today is all about the banh mi, and here we have yet another banh mi creation in Vietnam called a banh mi tit. You might remember me talking about ja lua, the most popular sausage in all of Vietnam. That is one of the main meats in here, and there's other sorts of processed meats that they put inside. Let's go order. Today, my cold cut banh mi is made with a base of liver pate and mayonnaise, a variety of sliced cold cuts, cucumber, pickled vegetable, a smattering of hot chili peppers, cilantro, and soy sauce. Another beautiful banh mi. Very important and unique is that liver pate with the mayonnaise mixed in. Mm. Oh. Those hot chilies are hot. There's still some nice fatty cuts of meat, but the liver pate with the mayonnaise together makes it so creamy. That's where like all the salt, the punch of the salt and flavor is coming from. Mm. And every bite is a little bit different. Right there, I just got a bunch of pickled vegetable, a ton of crunch, a little bit of sourness to go with the, the spiciness from all that hot chili. Not bad. And in fact, quite good. To check off the final classic street banh mi from my list, I recruited the help of my buddy and fellow YouTuber, Kyle Lay. <music> Kyle Lay has made hundreds of videos about Vietnam, and now he's documenting the Vietnamese diaspora around the world. But today, he's helping me find a yummy sandwich. This is a market, and unfortunately, uh, not much is going on because uh, neither of us could wake up on time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but they're still gonna have some banh mi. Yeah, banh yeah, we should, get, we should be able to get some banh mi, yeah. I've been living in Vietnam for almost 10 months now, and then we stumble upon a new kind of banh mi that I've never even seen before that Kyle actually had just mentioned, and this is the fish banh mi. Uh, is, is that what you call it? Uh, banh mi chak ya. She starts off from a paste like this. Okay. And this is just a pulverized fish Pulverized, paste. it's a saltwater fish, by the way. It's a gat hu, but don't ask me what that is in English. And uh, she'll smoosh it up into a nice thin patty, and then uh, fry it up, deep fry it up like that. Wow. Yeah. And so this is just straight up oil over here. Yep. In the hierarchy of banh mi, where do you put the fish one? I'm gonna have to put it towards the bottom because it's not so common. Okay. However, it's very delicious. All right. It's more common towards the coastal cities like Nha Trang, for example, near the beach. The fish banh mi is made with a splash of soy sauce, a bit of chili sauce, Vietnamese coriander, and plenty of fried and sliced fish cake. We've got the two fish banh mi's, and it's only 15,000 each, 30 total. Again, around 75 cents. Uh, there you go. Come on. Come on. Come on, Jay. Oh, what a nice lady. It feels a little sparse compared to some, although the, those meat chunks are pretty, are actually pretty big. You ready to take it down together? I'm ready. Three, two, one, oh, let's go. Mmm. Wow. Mmm. That's actually really nice. Mm. It's still really warm from being fried. Very savory. Like, um, intensely salty. This is the first time I've seen the Vietnamese coriander instead of the cilantro inside the banh mi. And you know what? It's a refreshing turn for the yumness. For the best. We've been putting it off long enough. Let's go get that $100 banh mi. I'm gonna put this in my backpack for later. And it's not because I, I do like it. It's because I'm getting full. As you can see, the banh mi is inexpensive, usually costing a dollar or less, but it's also extremely versatile. That's why I asked Michelin-trained chef Peter Franklin, the founder of Ang Ang, to assist me in the task of scaling up this tasty treat. I want to make a banh mi. I want to scale it up in every way and make the $100 banh mi. What was your first thought? My first thought was this guy is crazy, okay. but uh, we always suffer for a crazy challenge here, so right. uh, awesome. we're willing to take it on. But before we delve any further, I wanted to sample some of the next level yumminess coming out of the Ang Ang kitchen. to go anywhere to get a hundred dollar banh mi, this is the place. And not because everything is expensive, but because they have the expertise. What they're doing is a modern take on Vietnamese food. You've seen pho, 
and now you see it here in a roll form. You've seen bolalot in my video, and now you see here the modern take on it. It's like a giant bolalot with buffalo meat with a purple cabbage blanket, okay? You have seen bonseo in my videos. One of my favorite things here, they have the bonseo taco, but instead of putting it in a roll up, we're gonna eat it here just like it's a taco, just straight up. We don't need to wrap it up in anything else. So we have some cilantro on here, some shrimpies, ground pork. Let's give it a try. Oh, the crispiness is real. I feel it already. Whoa, that tastes amazing. And look at that structural integrity, crispy but not falling apart. What I really like about this is we see herbs all over in Vietnamese cooking, but here they've used dill. I wasn't expecting the dill. It hit me, but it hit me in the right way. As awesome as that was, that is not why we're here. We're here for the $100 banh mi. This is not something that is on the menu here at Ang Ang. I spoke to their chef and I said, I have this stupid idea. Uh, first, you know, I think one of the things about the banh mi sandwich is one of those uh, Amazing sandwich, it's one of the wonders in the world, and uh, they can do it for one dollar, basically. Right. So we decided with you to do something a little bit different. Instead of the normal co-cuts types of stuff, we have all cooked product. It's more of a French twist to the sandwich. So how do you make a hundred dollar banh mi? We start by grilling a large size baguette, then slathering it with some truffle mayonnaise. Meanwhile, we grill up a massive bone-in pork chop. While that's firing up, we sear and baste five large portions of foie gras. Now, of course, I know what foie gras is because I grew up in a trailer park in Minnesota, <laughs> but some people don't know what foie gras is, and uh, could you tell us? Uh, so basically, it's, it's uh, duck liver, okay. and uh, so it's, it's almost pure flavor, pure fat. How much is that like per kilogram? Uh, this is a lot of money, so 125 grams here. Most uh, restaurants, they, they will give you about 30, 40 grams or something mm. like that. You're gonna have to pay like 30, 40, 50 bucks or something. It's time to slice up the pork chop and start assembling, starting with some duck liver pate. Instead of the normal pate, we, we have a French charcutier who's basically making the duck liver pate for it's mm. much nicer, more refined than the typical product. More piling on of foie gras and pork. And then everything else uh, is the usual with the cucumber, your favorite. Then topping that with some familiar local ingredients, including cucumber, cilantro, dill, and pickled carrots and shallots. Then a blowtorch is used because expensive food usually requires a blowtorch for some reason. Finally, some pork sauce and sriracha for the heat factor. Hundred dollar banh mi right here. I don't want to pick it up yet until I'm ready to eat it, but it looks heavy, like I might pull a muscle on my back or something. To accompany the banh mi, I'll have some Hanoi Bia Hoi and battered fried sweet potato fries with a special dipping sauce. So this is called uh, Dip Caviar. It's a local caviar just recently made in Vietnam. You know, Vietnam is changing now. We have some very high-end products where we can, where the product is really good. We want to showcase that. We're yes. taking a sweet potato fry and we're dipping it into black caviar. Correct. It's so, it's so egregious, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so over the top, it's amazing. You've outdone yourself? Awesome. Let's go eat this. Here we are, our clickbait moment of redemption, the $100 banh mi, it is here, it is real. I can't wait to try this with you. Oh, Kyle. I totally remembered you were here. Uh, do you want to try it too? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, that's why I'm here. That's why I spent all day with you. Okay, yeah, no, for sure. Um, yeah, let's do it together. Yeah, sure, yeah. Do you mind if I do it first? It's all yours, yeah. Okay, cool. Sweet potato fry, dipping it in the caviar. This is the most mm. opulent thing I've ever done in my life. You wanna try some? I don't even know what opulent means. Look at that, mm. caviar and sweet potato fries. Ready? <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> I never thought I would like caviar as a dip. It's working, it's working well for me. That is a double dip. You gotta dip and then flip, <laughs> my dude. $100 banh mi coming up, but first, you gotta try this truffle mayonnaise. Get a nice dip, you don't have to go crazy with it. I want you to nail down what it, it tastes like to you. Mmm. Mm. That, that is. So amazing. It has kind of a sting to it. You know how gasoline, you, when you smell it, it kind of smells good? Mm -hmm. It has a little sting like that to yeah, it. Yeah, like nail polish. But in a yeah. delicious way. The moment of truth, the $100 banh mi. I went up to Peter and I said, how would you approach a banh mi if it needed to cost $100? This right here is the form it has taken. You have to actually remove all this bullshit right here. He actually told me to take him off. He said, it's not a banh mi, 
unless it has cucumber. I agree. Step one, fold it in half. Oh, oh baby. Oh, I'm gonna be good to you. It's thick. This is T-H-I-C-C, -C, thick. Is this weird? I'm just gonna eat it. Uh, like, I mean, eventually you'll give me a yeah, 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 for sure, eventually, yeah, yeah, eventually, yeah, this is your show. The amazing $100 banh mi, first bite, first impression. Mm-hmm. Whoa. That was like a flavor adventure, bro. The fattiness of that pork chop. Oh, it's so incredibly flavorful and smoky. This is, uh, I feel bad, man. You good? Yeah, I'm good, as long as you're gonna give me an adventure. Oh, for you sure, yeah, 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 eventually. I'm not gonna eat this whole yeah, thing. Yeah, that would of be, course. Yeah. What kind of kind of that <laughs> yeah. mm. Man, watching you eat the hype is real, man. I can't wait till I get to try a piece. You know, is that good? Yeah. This is ridiculous. I'm gonna be honest. I thought you would just put some expensive stuff on it and then I'd take a bite and I'd be like, ah, it's pretty good. Anyways, that's the show. This is exceptional. So if you think about it, I've already eaten about $15. I'm gonna chase it with caviar. Oh my God. I'll take a bite. I'll right. keep going on this side. Right. You start on this side. Right. We'll meet in the middle like Lady and the Tramp. Yeah, don't no, try it. Lady and the Tramp with the spaghetti and then they kiss. It's two dogs. Oh. It's adorable. Huh? Mm. What do you think of it? I think it is packed with flavor. Yeah. Rich flavor. It's rich. It's That's a good rich. description. That foie gras is so rich. It's just like pure. It's lingering. I can't fat. get it out of it my mouth. It stays in your mouth. Forever. I need pieces of ginger Endeavor. in between this, like uh, like when you eat sushi. So you like it? Absolutely, yeah, of course. It's, it's like it's giving me a heart attack right oh now. Oh my god. That's it, 10 out of 10. This has been an amazing experience. I hope you learned a little bit about banh mi. I want to say thank you to Peter for going through this crazy idea. Thank you to Ang Ang, check him out next time you're in Saigon. Thank you to Kyle for showing me around to some of the awesome street banh mi's. And maybe subscribe if you feel like it. You don't have to, it's, it's a very low pressure situation. Uh, also, what if you liked this video? There's a button with a thumbs up, maybe you click on that. But you don't have to either, like, it's pretty, I keep it pretty open. Yeah. So, whatever you want. Don't do this one, though. Um, we'll see you next time. A peace.